Hey everyone, this is Tracy from Pop Blitz Magazine. I am chatting with Bob Moffat from the band Lake Strangers. How's it going, Bob? Yeah, hey, that's good. I just uh, came back from eating, and um, I'm just living here in Nashville, Tennessee, working on some music, so it's just a life and good right now. Awesome. Good meeting? Good meeting. You know, I think every every meeting we're having here in Nashville is a step forward and and trying to find us uh, a label and a, and a home to be able to uh, take our music to the public. So, Well, I haven't talked to you in forever. It's literally been like seven years or so since the train shows. How the heck have you been? What yeah. have you been up to? Well, since train tour, I think that was, I forget the year that was. I think it might have been 2001, 2002. Yeah, something like that. But so, <laughs> lots, of, lots of happened. My brother and I, my brother Clint and I, we, we made a record in Thailand. It was a pop record, and uh, we, we made that record under the name Shame Shame. And it was just really just to get out and have some fun again and make some music and play for some people. And um, we had, I think we had three or four number ones throughout Southeast Asia. So it was it was great to get back on the radio and get back playing in front of fans. And um, it made us realize we wanted to take music seriously again. And um, that's why we moved to Nashville, to start writing with the best writers in the world. I think a lot of the best writers in the world are here in Nashville. And uh, we wanted to work on our craft and, and become better songwriters. So that was why we moved to Nashville. And it's been great. You know, I think they say Nashville is a five-year town, and it looks this is our fifth year here. And, it looks really promising to be able to get a label and, and get our music out there. So we're happy. That's awesome news. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah. And I got I gotta say that I did I did get a copy of the same same record. Liz Liz had that and burned it for me, so Well, you know, it was a fun record. It wasn't it wasn't anything we were taking overly seriously and we just wanted to come up with something that was really poppy and, and fun and something that we're you know, it was just it was a great experience. We collaborated with a lot of Thai Thai writers and producers, and they have their own style of writing, and they're very pop orientated over there. So it was just it was just a lot of fun, and um, and that was the main thing for us. Well, that's awesome. I know I know that we enjoyed it. So. Cool. That's great. Okay, I hear that you got married. Okay. I did. I uh, <laughs> I you know Amanda and I had had been seeing each other long distance for over a year. She's from Canada. And um and uh, we met here in Nashville and uh we instantly hit it off and we did the long distance thing for a year and um she decided to um kinda of quit what she was doing in Canada and, and move down here and go to school. So she's at school right now and um it's been great, you know, I'm, you know. I was ready for that in my life. I wanted that kind of stability with somebody and and to be able to share this step and this, you know, it's great to be able to experience um, traveling and and, uh, and what I do with my brothers. It was, it was awesome for them to be there um, with that experience. But I, I just felt like at my point in my life right now, I wanted to share that with somebody else as well. So, and, and vice versa, I wanted to be able to have um, the experience that she goes through and, and be, there, be there with her for that as well. So it's just been a great experience all the other I definitely can understand that. Well, that's really sweet of her to move move down and go to school there so she yeah. could be with you. It's a big commitment. You know, she has all this their families back home in Canada. And it's nice because a lot of areas of Canada are very long road trips to get to, but where she lives is, is Toronto, so that's only a 10-hour drive, so it's nice for her to be able to go back and visit when she can. So that's worked out to our benefit. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. I am happy for you. Thank you. That is Thank awesome. I feel like I've kind of grown up with you guys, and now we're like at the same, you know, at a totally different point in our lives. <laughs> that's that's what it's all about. You know, it's it's nice. The the one great thing about making music when you're you know you're a teenager is that you have fans who are the same age, and you know you can share your experiences. I think that's why Taylor Swift is so popular. You know, mm-hmm. you know she's she's. I don't think she's ever. I don't think she's going to go anywhere. You know, you, people think that you know 
she won't be able to write for her age demographic when she gets older and she starts experiencing these things. I think she's only going to be the voice for those people as well. I think she's going to grow with her parents. Her parents are going to grow with her. And ultimately, um, you know, she's going to write about how she feels for the rest of her life, and she's great at it. So I think, um, I think that's one great thing for from what we can take from from, from being you know, popular as kids is that you, you have to relate to your audience, you know, and, and they exactly. make you want to write about what you're going through because it's what they're going through. So you're always being honest with what you're writing. Exactly, and that's that. What's make that's what makes you connect with your audience and keep those long-lasting fans. Exactly. So I have to ask, how are Dave and Scott? Well, Dave and Scott are great. You know, I mean, Dave's been living in Toronto for, I think, five or six years. He really doesn't do much music. If he does, it's <laughs> it's just to, you know, kind of dabble with it. He has fun doing it, but he's not taking anything seriously. And Scott's been producing records for the past five years. A lot, of, a lot of bulk of that work's been in Thailand, but he's become a really great producer. And I think he's actually moving to Nashville um, the next month or so. Um, that's sort of the plan. So he wants to take his production and the skill set that he's acquired over there, and he wants to bring it here and start um, trying to do some work over here, which I think is great for him. I think he'll be really successful doing that over here. Cool. Well, maybe he could produce for, for part of your album. I like that, you know, I mean, he's, he's a really creative guy, and uh, we work well together, so you never know, I mean, that that may happen, I'm definitely not close to that happening. <laughs> we'll see. So, about yeah. the new project, Like Strangers, what can you tell us about that? Well, it's 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 been a lear- learning process for us, you know, from when we first came to Nashville, um, we really weren't doing what we're doing now, we were... Um, we were just getting, you know, familiarized with the market and the songwriters and the songwriting and the quality of songwriting that is is what Nashville's made up of. I mean, you know, pop music for me is very melody driven and um we became really quite good at writing melodies but lyrics were secondary. That's just the nature of pop music in my opinion. And so uh, when you come to Nashville, you, you're really expected to focus on the lyrics, um, most importantly. And so, because I think the country audience really, really listens to lyrics um, first and foremost. So I think and I think you have to have a commercial melody to be able to go with that lyric. But um, you know, when we first came here, it just was we wanted to get in with the writers, and it took a long time for us to be able to find a core group of writers that we really meshed well with. And we found four or five people that we just love. Um, what they do, and um, and um, we've also been able to figure out our sound, you know, and and it's been difficult because in Nashville, I, I think it's it's very difficult for young guys in this market, especially when you're doing something that's kind of um, against the grain of, of what is looked at as being successful. Um, Successful makeup of an artist here. I think you know male solo artists do really well here. Um, duos, you know, your typical duo in Nashville right now is there's not really anybody seeing too hard like the Everly Brothers did and Simon and Garfunkel. So it's it's been a process for us to be able to um, make record labels see that as something that's a um, valuable um, thing here in Nashville. But I think the more we just persevere and the more we get out there and make our own fans and make people you know, I think ultimately the fans will determine whether or not they like it. And if they like it then the record labels will tune in and go, Okay, this is something that is pretty cool and different. But right now it's the way the way this, the industry is, the state of the industry, it's a gamble for any artist and um I think for us to just be persistent and patient, um, we'll find um we'll find that group of fans in a label, um, within a label that likes and gets what we do. So right now we have great management. Our manager is um, Lee Geyer, who runs a very successful publishing company here in Nashville. 
They were co-managed by um, Clint Hines and Energy State Jeremy. And our producer is Paul Worley, who produces Lady of the Dawn and, um, and uh, the band Perry. So we've got a great core group of people who are working with us right now. And um, all we have to do right now is just find a home and a label who's willing to you know, invest some money to get us out there and we find people. Awesome. Well, best of luck to you with that. I think it'll happen. I think you've got some dedicated fans from years and years ago that are going to rediscover you, too. I think so, too. I think, you know, we're spending a lot more time on our Facebook um, page. That's Just definitely, yes. That's been important. I'm sorry? I said you definitely have to, you know, Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, it's, a new, it's a new world that people want to connect with, with, um, with the artists that they're interested in. And I get that. I mean, back when we were performing, it really wasn't like that, you know, and there was much more distance mm-hmm. with the fans. But I've, I've seen think with us, we always had a very good connection with our fans. And, um, but you really have to stay on it, you know. I mean, it's, it's, you really have to be on top of your social networking and your, um, your, um, your Internet stuff. It's, it's crucial to us at this point, you know. Yeah. So seeing as you've been in the business for the past 20 years and the industry has really changed, how do you think that, how do you feel that it's changed for the better, for the worse? Well, I think, I think it's changed. There are pros and there are cons. I think the, 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 good, the good part is that I think it's much easier to get your music out there to the fans. Yep. Um, if you don't have a label, I think um, as an artist, you have a lot more freedom to be who you are because you have a lot more um you have more avenues to be able to take your music if, if you get turned down by a label or if you have somebody saying, no, do this, try to be more like this artist. You know, I think that was the stereotype of a label was to conform you to something that they feel can be a success in mm-hmm. the industry. And I think now if you have a lot more uh, capability to, have to stick with your integrity and stick with who you are because... Um, People will find you, and people will discover you if you have um, good songs and you have something going for you that's different. And I think the negative aspect to what's happened with the music industry, because you know sales are down and um, people aren't buying as many records. Even though I think there's an upswing in different areas, I think you know you're making you're making you're you're making that up with you know digital sales and ringtones and stuff like that. So it's not as bad as it was two, three years ago, but I think labels are a lot more, um, I don't know, they're more afraid of signing things that are different, and um, even if you listen, I think if you listen to the radio these days, it's a pretty good indication of that. I think there's a lot of great artists, but um, I think labels are a little more safe than they, than they were in the past, in my opinion. Oh. And, um, and that's, I think that's the negative aspect of it. But in terms of getting out there and playing for the fans, I don't think it's been, I, I think this is the best it's ever been. You know, I think, I think this is the best time for music for, uh, for artists at this point, you know. I agree, because they can get out there and put out their own music and not be, you know, controlled or told what they have to do by all the labels. Yeah. And they can just, yeah. you know, they can just start up a YouTube page and put it out there. Exactly. Pretty much. And I think the pop, the pop market and more of the world markets, the world genres, pop, rock, I think they have a better grasp on that than the country market does at this point. The country market is still very much a radio-driven market. If you're not on radio, you're not reaching your masses. You know, I think um, with pop, if you hear one thing with a certain artist or a certain artist talks about you, if you don't have a record to tell, you can you can create you can make waves based off the internet and somebody saying something about you or um, connecting with that audience because they're much more avid with the internet. But I think with country, I think it's going there. I think it's going that direction with artists like Taylor Swift and getting a younger audience into country music. But I think country music's always been a radio-driven market. So unless you're on that format, it's more difficult for you to break into the mainstream. 
time. Yeah, I'd agree with that. What inspired you to go back to your country roots then? I'm sorry? What inspired you to go back to your country roots then? The writing. I think that um, I've always really loved country music and um, I've always been, you know, I think whenever you, whenever you work on a craft and you're trying to become great at something, you have to go to the best writers, you know, and I think there are great writers in Los Angeles, great country writers in Los Angeles too, um, and great pop writers, but for me, I think we are very melody-driven writers, and uh, we wanted to work on being able to tell a story, and not, not a contrived story, a story that's, you know, um, that's coming from you and that is poetic, and so I think um, if you can... If you can dig out those writers here in Nashville that are really, really good at um, at writing like that. Not not so much head writers, you know, like if you're writing to be clever or writing, you know, <laughs> to be funny or something like that. You know, I think there's, a, there's definitely a, a place in the market for that. But I'm definitely, I want to, I think Taylor Swift's the greatest, you know, um, truth and heart writer of, I think she may be right now at this point the best in, um, in her, in her genre, and I think that um, it's because she's great. She's great with poetry as well as knowing herself and knowing how to communicate her feelings. So um, it just takes time and it takes work and it takes the writing with people who are better than you. And I think that um, that's that's why I wanted to get back here. And, and I also think our music and our style of writing um, combining with country, um, you know, gives us an opportunity to do something that's different. You know, and, and have a different sound. Um, so it's, it's just one. Well, that's that's kind of why we wanted to get here and, and start fresh. Awesome. Well, that's the one thing I like about country songs is the lyrics. Yeah, I mean the lyrics. The lyrics are everything to country music. You know, and um, yep. it's well, a little bit tough as a writer to be able to become a recognized songwriter here because there's so many great writers and there are so many great artists in this town. Um, and to to, uh, to break through is, is not an easy task. So it's just it's a good test um, for for any artist, for any musician to be here. So you started when you were three years old singing country music. How do you feel that you've progressed as an artist over the past twenty some years? Well, um, I mean, I think with hard work. You can do anything. I mean, I think that, you know, with talent, you know, get you so far with anything in life, but, um, you know, if you stay with it and you, um, and you work hard at anything, I think you're going to become better at it. Which I think that's the main thing, you know, I think when I was three, I'm not sure if I really had <laughs> huge passion for making music. I think I've developed passion for music. And, um, it's like, it's like when you go play golf, you know, and, you give one good shot, you know, it makes you want to go out and play again, you know, but uh, for me, it's like, you know, when you're able to, to do something well, you know, it it makes you want to keep getting better and, and doing it, and I think the, the great part of being in the Moffitts was being able to travel the world and seeing different cultures and meeting different kinds of people. It, it really opens up your mind. You can become stagnant. You know, if you stand still yep. and you um, and you don't keep drawing yourself by different people and different um, and um, different ideas, so um, I think the the main thing was being able to travel throughout Europe and Asia and being able to share those cultures has also um, been a huge asset to our music and 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 how we want to approach uh, our music and what we want to sing about, you know. So I think that's, being able to travel, I think, is, is crucial. So um, I always, I want to make sure that when I have a family that, that we travel, because um, I think it's really important um, in, who you, in, in making up who you are as a person. I agree. That's one thing I'm hoping to do when I, you know, start doing work with artists. I want to do uh, yeah. artist artist promotion and start doing, like, management and booking shows. And I would love to just go out on a tour just as, you know, as an assistant tour manager to help, you know, help the guy out and 
just learn and get to experience all of that. Yeah, experience is, you know, experience is knowledge. And you can never have too many experiences. I think um, you know, always experience can always change your perception of something or um, if you grow in a certain area that you thought you had it figured out, but then you go somewhere else and you go, you know, it, it, and then, so it, it also makes you aware of the fact that you know nothing, you know, when you go to these places that even if you think you know a little bit, you don't. Because <laughs> you're yes. always, there'll always be some somebody somewhere that will remind you that you don't know anything. <laughs> nice, yes, yes. 